Welcome back to Power Electronics. And we continue with our series on resonant DC to DC converters. In this video, we're going to look at the voltage gain for the series LC and the series LLC resonant converter. Here's an overview of the video. First, I'm going to derive the input-output equation for the half-bridge series LC resonant converter. Then we'll provide a graph of the gain for different values of the quality factor, Q sub E. We'll discuss line regulation for the converter. In line regulation, the input DC voltage, V sub DC, varies, and we try to maintain a constant output voltage. We'll need to adjust the switching frequency of the DC to AC inverter on the front end of the converter to account for that change. We'll discuss load regulation for the converter. In load regulation, the output load varies. Again, we will have to adjust the switching frequency to modify the gain structure to account for the change in load. Then I'll present the gain equation relating output to input for the series LLC resonant converter, provide a graph of the gain for different values of QE for that converter, and discuss line and load regulation. Below are some outstanding references, and I'll provide this in the description below. Here's a block diagram of our generalized resonant converter. And in this video, we are going to relate the output to the input. As a review, here's the circuit schematic for our half-bridge series LC resonant converter. We're going to derive an equation that relates our output voltage, V sub O, to our input bus voltage, VDC. In order to do that, let's define our input as a square wave into our tank circuit and our output as the voltage that will appear across the primary windings of our transformer. We can use a voltage divider relationship and we see that the output related to the input is equal to the equivalent resistance R sub E divided by R sub E plus J times omega LC minus one over omega CR, the impedances of the capacitor inductor. Factoring out RE from the numerator, we obtain a simplified version of this equation. And next, we're going to substitute 1 over RE equal to QE divided by omega naught times LR. And let me do that on the next page. Here we see that the LR will cancel out in this part of the equation. And we'll also obtain omega naught squared in the numerator due to the CR times LR, which is the definition of omega naught squared. This simplifies to 1 over 1 plus J times omega over omega naught times QE plus QE times omega naught over omega. Finally, if we substitute F sub N, our normalized frequency, into the equation, we obtain that the magnitude of our input output is equal to one over the magnitude of the denominator of this equation, which is one plus QE squared times Fn, our normalized switching frequency minus the reciprocal of our normalized switching frequency, one over Fn, that quantity squared as well. Here I've defined the magnitude that relates this portion of our circuit, which I've called V sub A, to the V sub N on this portion of the circuit. And we've just derived that. Now let's apply that using the turns ratio and VDC to obtain an equation for V sub out. And here we see that V sub out is equal to mg, the gain, which is a function of Q and our switching frequency, 
times our input voltage to the bridge, VDC divided by 2, all divided by N, our turns ratio of our transformer. And here are the normalized values. Our equivalent resistance is 8n squared times our load resistance, all divided by pi squared. Our quality factor, q sub e, is the square root of lr over cr divided by re. And our normalized switching frequency is our switching frequency divided by our resonant frequency, f sub 0. In this graph, we plot the gain equation m sub g as a function of our normalized frequency f sub n. When f sub n is equal to 1, our switching frequency is at resonance. Recall that we typically want to stay at resonance in order to, to maintain zero current switching. But we, I also claim that we wanted to be slightly inductive in order to have the current lagging slightly from our voltage to ensure zero voltage switching. That implies that we want to be operating in a region If we assume a constant load that's going to imply a constant QE. And we'll be operating on one of these values of QE. Let's assume we've designed our system to have a gain of 0.8. And therefore, we're going to be switching at 1.2 times our resonant frequency. As our input DC voltage VDC changes, we will have to modify our switching frequency to maintain on this load line with constant QE. So we can adjust for different values of our input voltage, VDC, by modifying our switching frequency accordingly. That's called line regulation. Now let's assume we have a constant line and therefore, will be operating along this direction for a constant line voltage, a constant input. But now let's assume that our load is changing. That means we are going to be varying our Q sub E. Again, as we change from one value of Q sub E to another, we will have to change our switching frequency. Let's take a look at the series LLC resonant converter. It's similar to the series LC resonant converter, but we include the magnetizing inductance of our transformer, L sub M. L sub M will appear in parallel with our equivalent load resistance, R sub E. And again, we can create an input-output equation from our input for our tank circuit to the primary voltage, which I call V sub zero in this equation to our, of our transformer, and it is RE in parallel with J omega LM, the impedance of our magnetizing inductance, all over the total impedance of the circuit. Here's the gain equation normalized to QE, FN, and LN for our LLC series converter. In this equation, we define a normalized inductance, L sub n. It is equal to the magnetizing inductance, L sub m, divided by our resonant inductance, L sub r. Our equivalent resistance value is the same, and our normalized switching frequency is the same, and we use the same quality factor. Our gain equation now is a function of our normalized switching frequency, our quality factor, as well as our normalized inductance, L sub n. Here's a set of curves for Ln equal to 5. And on here you can see we have a 
gain equation that will allow us to exceed the value of 1. Typically, we want to be operating on this side of the curve to ensure we are in the inductive region, and that will help to maintain zero voltage switching. In order to maintain zero current switching, we're going to want to work at resonance, and our resonant frequency actually is going to change slightly uh, due to the LLC configuration. Here are the key points. First, we derive the input-output gain equations for the series LC and series LLC resonant converters. We saw that regulation to maintain a constant output requires us to adjust the switching frequency. With line regulation, we assume that the load is constant and that applies a constant quality factor Q and we needed to adjust the switching frequency to modify our gain. In load regulation, we assume the input VDC is constant, and therefore our gain is constant. However, we had to adjust the switching frequency to account for changes in our quality factor associated with our load. Thank you for watching.